The statement, I'm not concerned about anything, wonderful things are taking place, is not a formula, nor is it a Pollyanna attitude on seeing only the good in spite of the bad. The statement, I am not concerned about anything, is based upon the most important of all metaphysical laws, the law that God is all. It is because of the allness of God that there is absolutely nothing to be concerned about. Let's think a moment about the allness of God. Listen to some of the statements which God himself makes as found in Isaiah. I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God. Mrs. Eddy attributes great importance to the law of metaphysics that God is all. In Unity of Good, page 7, she speaks of it as a self-proved proposition and an incontestable point in Christian science. On page 30, lines 11 through 13 of No One Yes, she states, God's law is in three words, I am all, and this perfect law is ever present to rebuke any claim of another law. I find great inspiration in contemplating God's allness from the statement found on page 520 of Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Unfathomable mind is expressed. The depth, breadth, height, might, majesty, and glory of infinite love fills all space. I am sure all of you have in individual ways been enabling yourselves to comprehend this tremendous infinitude of God. You know, somehow I seem to feel real deeply His allness when I say, why well, I'm right in the very midst of God. Fifty billion miles all around me, there's nothing but God. Fifty billion miles beyond that, and beyond that, and beyond that, there is nothing but God. Therefore, there is absolutely nothing to touch me but God. There is nothing to influence me, condition me, govern, or control me, but God. In the Christian Science textbook we read, Since God is all, there is no room for His unlikeness. Science and Health, page 339, lines 7 through 8. There cannot be both God and accident, war, earthquake, tornado, or chaos of any description. There is only God. There cannot be both God and heart trouble, cancer, palsy, epilepsy, colds, sickness, or disease of any description. There is just God. There cannot be both God and hatred, fear, criticism, resentment, rebellion, worry, or sin of any kind. There is just God. There cannot be both God and even a belief in error. It is because this law rebukes even a claim or a belief contrary to God's allness. There is no claim or belief, no dream, no illusion. There is just God. How does the law of God's allness rebuke even a claim or a belief of another law? It is because unfathomable, infinite, eternal, divine mind is the only mind. And there is no other mind, no mortal mind, to entertain even a claim or a belief of something opposed to God. There is just God divine mind. How wonderful it is that no matter what the error, we understand it to be completely non-existent, utterly impossible because of the ever presence of the allness of God. So when we say, I'm not concerned about anything, we actually mean that because of the allness of God, there is absolutely nothing to be concerned about. It was because of the allness of God that it was impossible for a man to be in a danger zone, impossible for there to be problems in a schoolroom, impossible for a husband and wife not to love each other, impossible for a business career to be ruined, and impossible for a little girl to take her life. A young lady who was working in an office alone suddenly found herself in the throes of severe pain and realized that she had lost her power of speech and that she was losing consciousness. All she could think of was God, and she repeated the word mentally 
as she lost consciousness. Sometime later, as she started to regain consciousness, she was again aware only of God. Finally, could she could say the word, but nothing else came, so she repeated the word, God, until she could say, God is. She found her speech and thought becoming clearer and repeated, God is, until she could say, God is all. She was so grateful and so joyous in being able to realize, acknowledge, and voice the allness of God that shortly she found herself manifesting only perfection. Her healing was complete and permanent. Isn't it wonderful that just because of the allness of God, we don't have to be concerned about anything? By the way, what are you concerned about? Your health, family, church, supply, the state of the nation, world affairs. I'm asking each one of you to repeat with me. I am not concerned about anything because God is all. There is nothing to be concerned about. The second basic metaphysical law underlying our positive, joyous statement is that God is expressing himself. It's thrilling to realize that God, who is all in all, is a divinely active God. Just contemplating God as life, we can see so readily that there is never any interruption to divinely active being. Contemplating God as mind, we see that there could never be such a thing as a divine mind, which is not thinking, knowing, understanding, comprehending, and expressing. Contemplating God as love, why, it's impossible to think of God as love and not to realize that he's ever actively loving his perfect creation. Just listen to the activity of God as expressed by just one psalm, number 104. He covers himself with light. He stretches out the heavens. He layeth the beams of his chambers. He maketh the clouds his chariot. He walketh upon the wings of the wind. He laid the foundations of the earth. He sendeth the springs into the valleys. He giveth drink to every beast. He watereth the hills. He causeth the grass to grow. He planted. He appointed the moon. He openeth his hand. He looketh upon the earth. He touches the hills. No wonder David exclaimed, O Lord, how manifold are thy works! In wisdom hast thou made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Psalms 104, 24.